Hey guys, welcome back. Orbaum here, bringing you another episode of our PTCGO live content. Now today, people, today it's finally going to happen. I haven't actually sat down and played this on the on the channel yet, but uh, we're going to finally be playing my favorite deck to play right now, and that is Giratina Malamar, Malamar Spread, uh, whatever you want to call this deck. This is a deck I've been working on forever because you guys know how much I love Malamar. It's the only deck I've ever had like completely max rarity. Which is kind of cool i think that's pretty dope so uh, i'm gonna try out this build i actually haven't played this build in quite a bit so we're gonna see how i like because i'm always contemplating changing a couple things like maybe going a heavier acro bike build removing the tate and liza and the tv reporter and the judge putting in four acro bikes and then changing something to be a mall mars or not mall Mar a mars shadow as well but every time i want to make that change acro bike kind of like makes me have to do some awkward decisions and then whenever i do that i either want to put in a pal pad or a fourth guzma and then that's even more cards i have to remove because i want to have some sort of disruption right so that's why i'm playing the judge and when i play this deck bench space for mars shadow is very non-existent uh you can still do it but then you kind of have to play around the fact that you have that because there's no there's no skateboards in this build which means you always have to have a coco down so you have that for your treater and things like that um i'm, I'm kind of going too deep into detail without even going over the deck so let's i think i should probably go over the deck first but anyways before we get into the video don't forget to drop a like if you if you like my content uh subscribe share all that good jazz check out our sponsors here at guardian gaming uh, for a chance to win a uh, for a chance to get a couple codes and answer the common question of the day being what is your favorite deck to play at tournaments like if you were to go to, tour to a tournament right now with a deck you know you could win the tournament with what deck would you choose uh, for me it's always it, for me it's usually malamar and now it's kind of shifting towards both malamar and bocephalon uh so let me know what you guys think but the whole thing is that we have a bunch of attackers that we can charge up with malamar here now there is another malamar build let me know in the comments down below if you want to see this but it's a it's a rainbow energy build which i think is super dope so if you guys want to see that i probably won't upload it right away unless you guys really want me to so let me know in the comments down below if you ever want to see that but for today we're doing just straight, straight giratina so malamar psychic recharge uh very standard stuff you just put a psychic energy from your discard pile to one of your bench pokemon and then we try to charge up Giratina. So Giratina, we're playing a two of, of these 130 HP Psychic type Pokemon. Has the ability of Distortion Door. So whenever you put it from your bench, from your discard pile, if, if it's in your discard pile, you may put it on your bench. If you do, you can put one damage counter on two of your opponent's Pokemon. So it's a good way to spread damage. Uh, Shadow Impact is 130 damage, and you put four damage counters on any one of your Pokemon. I usually put it on the Giratina itself, depending on the matchup, because I want Giratina to be knocked out most of the time. Because we can put it back on the board, and we can attach a Spell Tag onto it. Spell Tag means that when this Psychic Pokemon gets knocked out, you can put four damage counters on any of your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. So, that's pretty, that's pretty handy, especially in a spread matchup where you're trying to put damage counters everywhere, put things in range of Giratina, maybe take knockouts from like your spreading that you did earlier, things like that. So, Spell Tag, very strong card. It really does put a lot of decks in checkmate position, like Lost March. Lost March pretty much can't beat this deck because of Spell Tag and Tapu Koko. So, there we go. And then the other attackers we have in here, we have a one of Shining Arceus. Now, there's a lot of debate whether Shining Arceus is worth playing in this deck or not. I think for the mirror match, it's... it's important to play if your opponent does not play shining arceus in the mirror match uh you can just <laughs> keep this active stop your opponent from coco spreading and then you can ultimate arrow spread yourself which is not that hard to do because we do play dcs in this deck 130 hp fable defense means as long as it's your active pokemon prevents all damage done to your bench pokemon by your opponent's attack so coco can't do anything arceus's attack itself can't do anything uh jet punch won't be able to damage your bench things like that so it's a very strong ability ultimate arrow does 30 damage to each of your opponent's pokemon so it's pretty handy there. We have one Onyx. Onyx is here for Land Crush. Uh, it's the, uh, the, there's a debate between whether you want to play Onyx or Larvitar. Onyx for four DCs as a straight 120, so it can instantly Oko anything Fighting Week for the most part. I can't think of anything that doesn't Oko that's Fighting Week. I don't know if there's any 250 HP Fighting Week Pokemon right now, but for a DCE and two Psychic Energies, two DCs, something like that. So uh, the, the debate is to also play um, Larvitar here. Larvitar has the attack second strike for a single DCE does 10 damage plus 70 more damage if they have three damage counters on them it's easy enough to manipulate three damage counters on them but specifically for Zoark it's kind of hard to it's it's kind of hard to validate playing Larvitar because even though you can Oko Zoark needs to have I believe five damage counters on them because this deck doesn't play choice bands it doesn't want to play choice bands you don't have you don't have space for your Pokemon to play choice bands so uh, they need five damage counters because if you're only hitting them for 80 
then you're only hitting 160, which means they have to have five damage counters on them in total, which overall shouldn't be that hard to do, but it is a little bit more set up rather than a slap down, attach energy and take a knockout kind of card like Onyx is, which is why I'm going for the Onyx. I'm playing two Coco. We don't play skateboards in this deck, so Coco is your free retreater. Flying Flip is an easy attack to do whenever you just don't have an attacker ready. Uh, just slap a DC on it, put two psychic energies on it. It's never a bad attack to go for. Spreading damage is pretty good just in general. So top of Coco, very good card. Uh, and then we have our, our um, Necrozma GX because Black Ray GX is an attack that's won me a lot of games versus cards like Necrozma um, versus, uh, not Necrozma, um, Mag Magnezone decks that have a lot of GXs down. Prismatic Burst is your nice slap down blow up attack, which is easy to charge up as well because of DCEs. I uh, usually don't want to charge it up with DCEs, but it's an option, but that's more important for the Black Ray GX. And light, Light's End means you're immune to colorless attackers. So if Drampa ever becomes a thing again, you can just slap down the crossbow and just wall the Drampa. So it's pretty handy. It is Psychic Week and it is a GX, so you don't really want to play it if you don't have to. But regardless, you're going to be putting this in this deck because that GX attack is too powerful not to play in this style of build. And then you have a one of Lele. Another card that I'm either... One, Lele is one of those cards where I kind of want to drop it because I play so many draw supporters anyways. I never really want to play down the Lele. But consistency is consistency, and that's what this deck is all about, being able to set up your board as easily as possible. You have access to Tapu Cure that can heal you up. I've had some mirror matches uh, where Tapu Cure is the thing that won you the game because they did manage to spread up, uh, spread enough damage with Giratinas and things like that. So Tapu Cure has won me a bunch of games. Energy Drive is an attack that we can load up to load up on as well in case your opponent's attacking with like a heavy energy Pokemon. Energy Drive can put in the work. Um, now, Lele is one of those cards I do want to remove because we have so many draw supporters and I don't want to GX in the deck because we are playing Shine Punishment. But at the same time, like you kind of need it because you you never know when you're going to be stuck. Excuse me. Uh, so that's why we're playing it. Now I am playing a one of Acro Bike because it doesn't hurt not to, it doesn't hurt to pl not to play it. Has a little bit of consistency. I don't know what else I would play in its space. I don't really want to play another Ultra Ball or Nest Ball. So we just put in Acrobike for the time being. That could change, or you can add more Acrobikes. We'll see. Uh, I do want to try it a bunch of different builds for this deck. I might just have a whole stream dedicated to playing this deck in the future. So yeah. Uh, for Mysterious Treasure, best card in the deck. Just searches your Psychic Pokemon. Uh, two Nest Balls. I believe I'm playing two. Yeah, two Nest Balls because it gets you your Coco, Onyx, and this, and also gets you your Inkays or whatever else you might need to get from the deck. But the Nest Balls are usually used for these first three Pokemon right there. Two Stretchers because we want to recycle our Malamars. Three Ultra Balls, just three in this deck. Don't You don't need more than three. You honestly don't even want to discard too much in this deck usually anyways. Usually you're just kind of drawing raw because you don't want to lose your hand because your hands are usually pretty good. Only time you want to discard is get rid of psychic energies, but we but usually you'll have an as long as you have two or three in a discard pile, you should be set for the rest of the game. Uh, two shrine of punishments. I the Japanese list played one. I bumped mine up to two because I like being able to bump Prism Star Stadiums. So having two shrine of punishments is really good. Plus it gets you it more consistently. It's really helpful against decks like the Cephalon and stuff like that. Uh, four Cynthia, three Guzma, one Judge for disruption. Uh, for Lily, because it's the best draw supporter we have in this deck in particular, because you, you're usually drawing a lot. Uh, one Tate and Liza, it gives you that switch option as well as shuffle draw. It can never hurt to have an extra one. And then one TV reporter, a card I was super against at first. And man, like people like Nelson, shout out to Nelson as always. Uh, people like Nelson were really trying their best to convince me that TV reporter is the truth. And I was super against TV reporter at first, but uh, in reality, TV reporter is very similar to like a fifth Lily because you're going to be using Lily a lot. You're usually going to be stockpiling the cards in your hand because the cards in your hand are usually very useful throughout the game. So when you have a, when you have TV reporter, it's kind of like the same thing as having a Lily, except you have the option to discard cards. Now between having psychic energies and just useless cards and matchups and Giratina, you usually want to discard a lot of cards in your, in your deck. So, um, or at least early game, right? So having that TV reporter, it doesn't hurt at all. To me, it is like a fifth Lily. Because shuffle draw is not something you want to do too much in this deck, but you like you kind of want to balance between shuffle draw and just straight drawing in this deck. Sightseer, I'm gonna I hear this a lot. Sightseer, I'm not a huge fan of. In fact, you know what I can do right now? Uh, just a just because I've already gone over this deck in a video beforehand. This is kind of like a quicker version or my updated version, I guess. I'm actually gonna go to the comments of that video if my YouTube is working because YouTube Mobile is not working for me for whatever reason. Ah, uh, there we go. I'm going to go to the comments of that video just to give them a quick look-see to see if uh, 
if there's any comments that I should go over. One big comment I get a lot is Sightseer. Why don't I play Sightseer? Because Sightseer just ultimately doesn't draw you enough and doesn't discard you enough that your items won't do. Uh, if you're only drawing till you have five in your hand, you're usually only drawing one or two cards while TV Reporter is drawing you three cards. Baby Tapu Lele, absolutely love playing that in this deck. I just can't seem to fit it. It was the first card to cut because I usually am just taking, I'd rather take knockouts for the most part using Giratina than attacking with Baby Lele. I guess that's like the bottom line there because Giratina is usually getting me the knockouts I want to get. I want to get. Um, a skateboard, once again, I already talked about it. I'm always going to have a Coco on my bench anyway, so I don't need a skateboard because Coco will be my free retreater for me. Um, let's see. Just trying to see if there's any other comments or questions. I just said the same questions over again. Why not Sightseer? Why not? Why not Marsh Shadow? I already talked about Marsh Shadow. Oh, Chimeco is another card. Uh, Chimeco is actually a card I really like. So let me go over Chimeco real quick. I know this recently, uh, Chimeco is the reason why there was a recent tournament win before this set came out. Here we go. Um, it was right there. Uh, here we go. Uh, not you, not in the you, Chimchar. So Chimeco, what it does for one energy, has the attack Bell of Silence. Your opponent can't play any Pokemon that has any abilities from their hand during their next turn. So that's an incredibly powerful ability while chipping down. It lets you set up your board very easily. Now, I do love Chimeco, but I feel like Chimeco needs to, needs to be in a build that has four skateboards because the whole idea of Chimeco is that you get it out really, really early in the game, you retreat into it, and you start attacking. You're never going to play more than probably two. Uh, I personally would never play more than one, and if it's prize, it's prize. Just kind of deal with it. Um, but then you have to get it active. You're never, you're not going to retreat. Clearly, you're not going to retreat. You're, you're not going to lead with your Coco every turn, and you need a psychic energy attached to it to start attacking. So what's going to usually happen is you're going to have to try to find a skateboard so that you can easily retreat. And in a deck like this, where you have a bunch of non-one retreaters like uh, like Shining Arceus, uh, Onyx, and um, Necrozma as well, and that's just the basics, by the way you're not gonna always have a way to retreat so i'm not playing chimeco because if you can't if you can't attack with a turn one when it matters there's no point in attacking with it at all so uh another card lunala prism uh, i don't know if i like lunala i mean every time i play luna i'm gonna i'm gonna be front with you guys uh lunala prism is a good card uh, I'm not saying it's a bad card, and I don't want anyone to think that I'm saying it's a bad card, because it's a very good card with a very strong attack, a lot of HP, good resistances, uh, weaknesses, whatever, and it's a good card. The problem with it is that whenever I play Lunala Prism, it doesn't do anything for me. Uh, no matter how many matches, because I played like a straight 20 match of Lunala Prism, and it just has never done anything for me at all. Like I've had matchups where I was easily able to play around the cards without having to put four psychic energies onto this one Lunala to start attacking. Uh, so that's why I don't personally play Lunala Prism, but it's a card that you can play. If it works for you, it works for you. I personally just have not played it in my, um, in my build. Uh, and there's one other, there's a, there's another card or Corio. It's another Pokemon you can just put down on your bench. Um, to get your psychic energies into your hand. It's this one right here uh, Unless you get two psychic energies into your hand and once again, this goes back to bench space I don't want to play this card because I don't have the bench space for it And then the last card that was actually a really really cute idea um, Maybe it belongs in its own deck is Driftblim here uh, Driftblim has the attack damage transport move four damage cards from each of your Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon So the idea is since it's a DC attack you just attack with the Giratina a bunch put damage counters on all your Pokemon and then uh, later, you just use Drift Blim's damage teleport, tra tra damage transport to move those damage counters from each of your Pokemon and take a huge knockout. Uh, the bench space is a thing, deck space is a thing, so I'm currently not playing it. It's a little bit too cute for my taste, but uh, overall, I think it's a really cool idea. I might make it. I might make that its own deck in the future, to be honest. Um, so that's something. Those are just a couple things to mention. But anyways, that's going to be the deck. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a couple of games. All right, guys, we found a game. So hopefully there's no clump. I know that we have nine draw supporters. No, we have 11 draw supporters and nine ball search. So, and then we have a one of Acrobike, one of Lele. So there's a lot of consistency cards. Like over one third of our deck is consistency cards. So hopefully we can, you know, not clump up. I don't, I don't ever have an issue with clumping in tournaments. I, I did like three league challenges, not cups, unfortunately, because I haven't been in cups yet for me to attend in my area and cups are usually on the weekend when i work which is kind of annoying because i do want to start going to cups more uh and i'm gonna try to go to dallas regionals too but that's not standard which kind of is lame but it's fine um why are we so we have two cocos four inkes and we lead lele <laughs> 
unfortunate and our hand is so good for like playing down shrine and stuff too but it looks like we're not going to be able to really do that well it depends on what is what his deck is i might just play down shrine anyways i've had many games where i just play down shrine regardless uh looks like he's playing oh he's playing unknown okay we have to win then all right so if he's playing unknown then we're not gonna be able to attack this turn but i'm definitely gonna try to put myself in position to attack as soon as i can uh so we're gonna just we're gonna spam the board with cards i guess we can't play down lily i would love to play like lily this turn but our lele is on the board so uh, i can't play down actually i can't play down shine because he's never gonna attack me uh so we're playing against unknown we have to try to beat this deck in time that's gonna be the huge it's gonna be kind of big uh we've already attached for the turn Wow, we really did just... What is going on today? Okay, well, we clumped up here. We didn't get more than one in gate, which is huge. That's absolutely monstrously huge. But Shrine is going to be ticking down at Eevee. So it shouldn't be a huge deal, I guess. Uh, we can play down all these cards on our hand. In fact, spread damage could win us the game. So I might just try to set up Arceus since he's never going to stop me from setting up Arceus. Because I believe these, these uh, Sand Slashes only have 90 HP. If they only have 90, then we can easily take a knockout on them. Let me just double check because I actually have no idea. I'm going to look that up because that's super important to my strategy next turn. Um, Alolan. All right. Alolan Sand Slash TCG. Yeah, because if they have 90 HP, I think that is my game plan. Slush Rush, I believe is this one. Uh, here's the image. How much HP you got there, buddy? All right, load up for me while I'm trying to record. Please don't take too long. It's about to be my turn. Yeah, he put all four of them down. I am definitely going with the uh, with the strategy. It's 110 HP, so I have to have I have to have four turns to attack. Is that worth? It might be worth because oh, I won't have enough Giratina spread. Yeah, it won't it won't make a difference. No, yeah, it actually will make an exact difference. So at least take two knockouts. So we're gonna try to do that. Plus, if he doesn't evolve them all right away, that's gonna be really good for us too. Of course, we get a clumped up hand, but that's fine. Dude, we would be able to attack this turn if it wasn't for this garbage. All right, we're just going to go for it here. Wow. Just just absolutely wow. Actually, what am I doing? I'm such an idiot. Um, Whatever. I don't know if I'll be able to win. We have Judge. So we just have to, we have to draw our Judge. So I have to continuously thin until we find Judge. Because we, we have to have a whole turn. We have to also keep track of how many cards are in this on play, right? So in order for him, I believe Unknown Hand is... I'm going to look this up while it's my opponent's turn, but... I believe Unknown Hand it involves, uh, I think, 36 cards. Not a TCG. In the, and to be in their hand, so I have to I have to know the exact numbers for this to work. Why is it not... Come on. I gotta make this difficult. I'll look it up on my phone. Because I have to know how many cards. It's gonna be easier for me to count the cards on board than it is to be for than it is to count the cards in um, his hand because it's a lot of cards. Um, dude, I'm just having a bad time today. Yes, please refresh faster. I can easily knock that out, especially if one of them is prized. Psychics, let me go to the psychic energy, psychic area. What's ha I'm not looking at McDonald's collections, I'm looking at Lost Thunder. TCG players garbage sometimes, I swear. Why is my why are my hands so bad? All right, let's take a look here. Unknown hand 35 cards, so you need 35 cards. So, in order for him to have 35 cards, he needs to have um, 25 cards in play. Uh, in play, right? So, we'll attach here so we can start attacking with Arceus. Well, Lily, we need to, or Cynthia will need to find Judge. We absolutely need to find Judge. Um, no judge yet, which is kind of big. Uh, we have to find judge quickly. Lead, dude, this is worst case scenario. I cannot repeat how bad this has been for me. God, I just cannot repeat it. This is awful. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I can't. I'm so upset right now. <laughs> I'm so incredibly upset right now. All right. Let's see if we can pull this off somehow. Let's 
So he gets another three cards. So he needs to have 25 cards in play. Right now he has two in the discard pile. Uh, two, four, six, eight, nine, 11, plus six is 15. So he has 15 cards on the board right now. 16 cards if you count the energy. So 16 cards on the board right now, which means if in order for him 25 left, he needs to have nine in his deck altogether. If he has nine in his deck and he plays down unknown, which means he has to have eight in his deck altogether. And then he has a switch into it. So once he gets to that, once he gets to the 10 range, I have to be a wary. Um, we have to find our judge. <laughs> I can't, I can't repeat that enough. I kind of want this to be knocked out because that means I can find stretcher. He's also gonna have to use like something like Breeze GX or something like that. So uh, other cards we have to consider. I kind of wish I, I'm gonna have to, if I attack with Guillotine, I'm gonna have to damage this. That's something I have to keep in mind. If we knock this out too, he can't, I'm gonna have to knock it out this turn, I think. Can I? I can, oh, I can't because we have TV report. Yeah, I'm gonna take a knockout this turn on it. There's our judge. Oh, thank the heavens. Okay. Um. Yes, we do this. So we're going to at least judge next turn. We're going to have to attack with uh, Giratina. And I'm going to try... Well, he doesn't have a way to, to damage me, so I think I'm okay. I'm going to take a knockout on this thing. Take my prize. I'm going to have to win by taking prizes. And now that everything is damaged, I can easily do that, I guess. I don't know, man. This is my first time playing this matchup, so I'm sorry if I like made any misplays, which I'm sure I definitely did at some point. Uh, but as you can tell, I'm kind of panicking because we had a really bad start. Shadow Impact. Put him on myself. All right, so he can't use Sylveon anymore. So that's pretty good for us, at least. It's two prizes. Uh, so it's one less one less thing he can do. And he's he needs to probably use Breeze GX here soon. If he uses Breeze and I can... No, I don't have enough Malamars down. Never mind. I don't have Guzma in hand. Because I would love to Guzma and like, just bring something up like this. But that's not going to be a thing I do anyways. All right. So I think we're judging next turn. Because now he has now does now that he doesn't have Sylveon on the board, I'm in a lot better of a position to just like kind of steal this game. All he can do is draw four more cards here at most, right? Because I think I don't know if he used his last. I only saw him use two two of these dudes. There's Brizion. He can breeze here, but I'm judging. So if he can like the second he uses Breeze GX is the second I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to use my judge. So this is why we play judge, apparently. We have to play judge now because unknown hand is a thing. So I'm glad I never considered taking out judge. <laughs> There's unknown hand. He's just putting it down here. All right. All right, all right, all right. We're going to play this nest ball to get ourselves inky down so we can start chaining. We don't have any way to take a huge knockout here, but two in case should be more than enough. He even put himself back, which means we get a free prize as well in this in this lovely Sanshiro. We can top deck an energy, which we can't. We go ahead and put down Inke here. No point in treasuring right now. I will play down spell tag though. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I want to do besides play judge here. Let's see if he scoops. So that sounds funny. Get a manual attachment. No manual attachment, unfortunately. He already uses GX attack and he has no Sylveon on board. So this is like best case scenario for me. Uh, why did I grab Coco? That was supposed to be an Inke. Bro, I am just gone apparently. I am super gone right now. Hello? That was supposed to be an Inke. Why was that not an Inke? Wait, I just—I guess I just misclicked without noticing. Okay, that's cool, I guess. Yeah, I'll take that win, though. <laughs> I'll take that W. All right, that was uh, very strange. So I love this deck, so I, I really do like this deck. I've only lost with this deck once against a Grand Bolt deck because uh, I just drew horribly. Like, like I'm talking like... <laughs> I'm talking like I didn't see a draw supporter for 10 turns into the game and a card that plays 11 draw supporters with an opening hand and searching but I didn't have enough search to like find a bunching case so I wasn't able to like chain my my uh my 
dude, I let it, I let it cook. I wasn't able to chain my Giratinas. This is an amazing, just a beautiful opening hand. We get to keep Malamar in our hand, discard these two, or something else if we have a Psychic Energy that we're gonna draw. Although I might just attach it, I don't know. Probably gonna discard it, actually. But this is like a standard hand for this deck. Because we play four Lilies, right? So we should find them. We should find them early game. But I did play against Granbull, and I just lost because he took... He, by the time I finally got a draw supporter, he already taken the four knockouts, which means at that point it's impossible to win. Unless he, like, super mega clumps, which is very unlikely. Uh, oh, look at this. Look at... Th this is just attractive. I've never been so attracted to a hand in my entire life. Look, how many Malmars we got? All right, we got three. So already our perfect board state is here. Uh... All we need now is a Psychic Energy, maybe a way to discard a Giratina. Throw three Malamars, I'll take it. Um, we have a draw supporter in hand, but we don't have any energies. So this is almost good, just our lack of energies is kind of disheartening. Uh, I don't need to judge because there's nothing I really need to get here. So I'm just going to pass. He can't take a knockout on me, so. Uh, but seriously, our lack, of <laughs> our, uh, our lack of Psychic Energies is incredibly disheartening. Did you play like even a regular manual attachment would have been good i would have loved to attach to coco because if we're playing against executor coco is kind of our boy here so i'm going to try to find a dc this year but clearly there's no promises with this hand uh we already lost one guzma so i can't discard another one we're just going to shuffle that one in uh nest ball i'm still probably going to play i just don't know what i'm going to grab with it because there's nothing i need to grab right now right i guess if i really i guess i probably should just grab a giratina I would like to not have to grab Giratina, but whatever. It gets it out of the deck. We need to draw a DC this turn because attacking with Coco is going to be really strong. Because against against Executor, you know, you need to put them at one. Excuse me. Uh, you need to put them at one thirty. If I could like guarantee an attack with Arceus, I would nest ball for the Arceus and then switch into it and then attack everything. But because we can't guarantee that, uh, there's no real point. Because we don't have any. If we had, if we just had like two psychic energies in discard pile. I could have I could have tried to go for it, but this is not what this deck is. It's Zero Aura. Okay, against Zero Aura, we just want to find we just want to find all of our non-GX stuff, so Shrine and things like that. So we're actually in a pretty good place here. Um, against Zero Aura, we should be fine. We don't have to do spread damage. I think now our focus is just to set up Giratina as an attack with Giratina. Spread damage is still going to be good, but Shrine and Spell Tag should be enough to where I don't have to attack with Coco this turn. So looks like we're just hunting for Giratinas now. He already has that down. Two zero auras. I wonder if he's playing the Naga build. I wasn't actually looking at his types, but his hand, uh, he had a pretty weak opening hand and we are in a great position here. We have to find stretchers. And I'm sure he's going to target down our Malamars. Um, I'm going to keep the, I'm going to actually keep the treasure in our deck. I'm going to just grab Giratina here. So only, it's our only one of Giratina to keep that in mind. Ooh, Onyx is going to be really good too. Cause Onyx can just take straight Okos. In fact, that just might be what I grab. I'm gonna grab Onyx. As long as our Fury Cheater is alive, we should be okay. Um, okay, we only have a one of Giratina in the deck. I have to keep that in mind. I'm keeping the treasure in the deck because I want to discard energies with treasure. Unfortunately, we did not find anything of the sort, but we did find DCE so I can at least attack with Coco this turn. Uh, no way to, oh man, not a single way to discard any psychic energies. Uh, the chances of him attacking me next turn are so low. <laughs> They're just so low. They're borderline impossible, so I'm not even going to bother. No point in attaching Spell Tag to Malmars because he's just going to target a different Malmar anyways. So I'm just going to Flying Flip here. And Spread will be able to do some work as well. Honestly, there's was, there was no reason for me to Flying Flip, but there's no reason for me to do nothing because there's still a Shuckle there I want to damage. Now, if I ever do get Giratina and let Spell Tag takes and things like that, I'll be set. We don't have a draw supporter in the hand right now, so I have to keep that in mind as well. All right, so he does play Zerka Tree. I guess he can just GX. Thunder Mountain's a card we have to watch out for as well. Let's see if he grabs Guzma here. Because if he has Thunder Mountain Guzma, he does take a knockout. But he won't be taking a knockout with Coco, which I am okay with. He does not have the Guzma, so um uh, he can't take a knockout still he just needs thunder mountain oh wait a minute he already attached for the turn never mind he uh never mind he does not need thunder mountain <laughs> he needs uh thunder mountain and a max elixir or an energy switch or a, uh, like an energy switch and a regular switch there's a lot he needs so we should be safe this turn and he put down another gx which is good so i'm sure he plays cards like aether paradise so the spread is going to be kind of important just for that as well 
but he has not. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he would have slapped down the stadium the second he got it. So I don't think he has it right now. You know, I'm in this weird position right now. He's going to GX me, I'm sure. He set up his board. He has four in the discard pile. All right, cool. So I'm in this really weird position right now. Like, I can't play Lele because I won't be able to have bench space available for Giratina. And I don't have a draw sport in hand. We already lost two, so we just have nine more left, which is still quite a few. Um, the only Pokemon in my discard pile is Necrozma. Now, granted, Necrozma is going to probably win me this game. <laughs> like, I can almost guarantee he's probably going to win me this game since this deck has no way to heal as far as I'm concerned. So we'll be able to spread a little bit more and then just finish the game off Necrozma. Especially since we still have Shrine on board. So I don't know what my opponent's doing, but I think we'll be okay. I don't know how long this video's been, guys, because I had to go take care of something, which is why there was a cut earlier. I guess he's choosing not to GX. Either that or he just decided to leave. That's also a possibility. Uh, yeah, okay, well, what is happening today? All right, let's get another game. Uh, who am I gonna be using soon? Water is, I don't know. I guess I'll be playing Quagsire at some point, so sure. Sure. Let's play another game here. Oh, there's a Flood Ace roll at the end. I'm gonna try to finish this ladder, actually. Uh, I don't know. There's only six days left. I'm not playing that much DCGO because we have a lot of I have a lot of work. I'm gonna be working like a million days in a row, guys. It's the holiday season. Like I work. I'm recording this on. You're not gonna see this for a while, guys. Cause I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to like get ahead on videos because I'm gonna be working so much. I'm not gonna have time to record. And my father's coming home, so I have to be sure to not be recording around him. So it's the thirteenth today, and I'm working. And today's a Monday, right? Or today's a Tuesday. So I'm working every day from tuesday till um to uh, wednesday wednesday to next thursday i believe so yeah i'm working every day till thanksgiving starting tomorrow mm, i really want to use a spell tag but i don't think i'll be able to i mean i guess i can i can treasure here for giratina and then yeah, he's, he's playing quagsire himself that seems really greedy I can just attach to the active here. I, that feels kind of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get Layla here. So let's go ahead and do this first. Yes, I'm losing. Okay, I know what I'm doing. Okay, I, I get what I'm doing. Let me grab a Layla here. I'm gonna grab Coco so I can slap this DC onto it. Yeah, I, I hate that I'm losing Stretcher, but it's fine. All right, that's what I'm doing. So I just want to, I, I mean, I don't really have to, this is kind of greedy. I don't really need to like maximize my, my Lele here, but might as well, right? Yeah, it's kind of greedy. I hate losing, I hate losing Guzma too. That's one thing I want to try to fit, fit in this deck. So it's like, it's like a double-edged sword, right? You want to play four Guzma, so you constantly have Guzma in the deck. Now this deck doesn't really need Guzma because you're still playing spread and you're a non-GX deck, so I kind of get the concept of not playing a bunch of Guzma, but it's it's still got that double-edged sword kind of feel, right? Where you want to play a bunch of Guzma so you constantly have them, but you also don't want to have too many Guzmas in your deck so you don't you're not in a in this uh, you're in this, so you don't get clutter early game. Uh, we need TV reporter. Um, this is good. If we can get a, if we can get an attacker next turn, that'd be nice i guess we're probably gonna have to lose one of the cards we draw i can't lose judge just because it's my other draw supporter i kind of need but we'll be able to attack with coco and coco is a pretty decent attacker although it's not great we don't need go coco per se uh giratina seems to be fine i just like coco because it's a free retreater but against his deck i'm sure he's not playing many gx's like maybe maybe he's the guy that plays Lapras and like all the other GXs. I know that whenever I play this deck, I'm going to uh, approach it with like a complete non-GX mentality. I don't really need Brooklyn Hill when I could just be playing Shrine of Punishment plus a bunch of uh, non-GX attackers like uh, Quagsire <laughs> and Naga Nadell, right? <laughs> uh, maybe maybe some what's it called? Maybe some Kyogre. It it could be good. I don't really know. It's just a basic attacker, which is why I kind of like the concept of it. Maybe Articuno GX just because like that's 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 like one of those cards you can easily move to the active. He is playing Palkia, uh, puts the 
energies back in the deck. That, that could be interesting. All right, Nest Ball gets us Giratina so that we can start attacking with it. I mean, I'm not super against that idea, but we won't be able to attack with it this turn, I think, right? Because we can only, we can manually attach. Um, let me TV report. No, I shouldn't TV report it first. Sorry for that. Let me try let me think about this. Yeah, I'm only gonna be able to attach two energies to it because I can manually attach to the active and then use both mo yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do this. We're gonna attack, we're gonna have to attack with Coco this turn, I think. So let me just get down another Inke. Because that's the game plan. Um it's actually no what we're grabbing first. We have all three, we have three Malamars in the deck, we have two Giratinas in the deck. No way to really discard here, and we're de we're definitely playing TV reporter, so I'm just gonna do that now. And nice, we can toss Giratina. We have Lily for next turn. We can attack with Coco this turn. Attacking with Coco just doesn't feel like it's necessary, but I guess with spell tags, it's actually really good. So let me go ahead and use Giratina's ability. Put one here and one here. Spell tag on the Tina. That was unnecessary. You didn't actually have to do that. How many energies do we have? We have three in the discard pile. That's pretty good. All right. I probably should have played Nest Ball first, but at the same time, I kind of want to keep these Nest Balls around in case he does start targeting my uh, my Inkays and I want to put down another one. And I want to be able to stretch her back in my Necrozma at some point in case we need it if, he, if he's playing a bunch of GX Pokemon. But overall, the setup, look at that. Dream setup already happened. We did have to play down Lele, which kind of sucks, but overall, like, the dream setup is here. If he doesn't evolve his his uh, his uh Ditto this turn, we do take a knockout on it. I didn't want to put the I didn't want to put the damage counter on here because it's completely useless there because we just take Okos on it. Not only do we hit for weakness, but it's also why didn't he evolve the Ditto? He should have evolved the Ditto. I guess he wants to make that one a uh, he wants two Naga Nadels, two Quagsires on board. So I guess that's fine. Um, but Ditto we can easily knock out not only with like spell tag proc, maybe a Coco attack, which is why the only reason why I'm saying I didn't have to put it there is because of two Coco attack would have taken care of it anyways. But he's probably he's probably going to evolve with it. Is he playing Cure? Oh, he's playing unit energy with Kirim. Okay, I know a lot of people in my comment section said they wanted to play this build easier, like it's more consistent. Like the consistency is very, it's a very hard argument, right? Because now you're playing like more Quagsires and more Noggin Adels, which is a lot more card than just playing an Arceus and like a bunch of free retreaters, which will constantly get you in the active. Dude, this is like super good for me, actually. This is amazing for me. We get a manual attachment. Not really sure where I want to put it. I guess we'll just put it on Giratina. We'll just... Lily here. Wow, this is super good for me. Uh, yeah, this is this is great. Everything here has a one retreat except for the Malmars themselves, so I might just put an energy on a Malmar, just so it has the option. I'm sure he's not gonna spell. He's not gonna pull up the the damage on. He's not gonna pull up the the spell tagged Malmar, so we should be okay there. We're just gonna take my knockouts here. We have Guzma in hand as well, but just having that option is really nice. Another thing, reason why the DCs are good is because they help you retreat your Malamars uh, and your Necrozmas and stuff like that. So you're not always in this weird position. But Ditto is gone. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess he's just going to try to attack me with White Kyrim. Now, White Kyrim has 130 HP, which is uh, pretty meh, I guess. And now from here on out, I'm probably just going to keep my Giratinas active for the rest of this game. We have Nespa on hand still too, which means we can get a Coco back down if we need to, which is going to be nice because I'm sure he's going to take a knockout this turn and having access to that Coco constantly to prepare your tree is going to be uh, pivotal for this deck to operate the way it should. As far as what I want to Guzma, there's, I mean, there's nothing I really want to Guzma here. I guess if I really, nah, I can knock out Kyurem, I guess. I might just do that, honestly. That keeps the free retreater on board. And there's no reason to just keep that Kyurem on board. Plus I wanted to get I want to get knocked out so I can start using my Giratina's spell tag. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and Sure. I will go ahead and just Shadow Impact. Mm, I'm sure he's gonna take a knockout regardless of what we do, right? So I'm just gonna put it on myself. Right? Because this, well, I mean, I guess technically, well, he still can't knock me out because I have a, uh, no, never mind, he can't. No, he can't because I have 90 HP. So unless he gets a fire energy, oh, 
Thank God. <laughs> Thank God I actually <laughs> did that play because I didn't realize Coco was priced. Um, this thing can hit 20, 40, 60. I guess now he can knock me out with Quagsire easily. With just three energies, but I'm okay with that. He can knock me out with this as well. I mean, like I said, I want to be knocked out. If I get knocked out here, I can I get to knock out. Well, now I don't, but I could have knocked this out. I can just put damage counters on these Quagsires, to be honest. We don't have any more Guzmans in play, so I have to keep in mind that whatever whatever I damage the most is probably going to be active at the end of the day anyways. So, yeah, and I'm sure this is going to be active a lot in this matchup too. So I'm actually just going to try to damage his uh, Quagsires, try to put them in even numbers, I suppose. Like, even knockout numbers, I should say. <sighs> but as far as everything else goes in this deck, like, I'm just playing on autopilot now. I'm just attacking every turn, trying to find my spell tags. We have two more left in the deck, so hopefully we can find them. And I want to try to find Guzmans every turn, too, so I can just manipulate where my damage goes. But at this point, like, there's no reason to do, like, I, I don't have to make any fancy plays here. Like, I'm only making fancy plays to speed up this match, so, like, I can go on to the next match. Because... I don't see my opponent getting out of this scenario. Like, I, I, I'm gonna have to try to find my last Malamar too, just so I can, like, not have to worry about manual attachments. This thing's going in. We're gonna take a knockout on it. Uh, I guess we just put damage on... Naganadel's probably never going to attack, but Quagsires can. So, let me put these both at 60. And then we'll put one here. We can knock this thing out from full, so it doesn't matter too much. All right. I could try to charge up an Arceus, <laughs> because why not? But we'll just keep using Giratina and targeting the Quagsires. I'm definitely gonna want a Cynthia here, which means a manual attachment must happen. Uh, I guess on Coco or on Lele because we can really blow up a Pokemon if we do that. Actually, maybe I should hold off on that because if I whiff Malamar, that could be pretty big. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it here, and then I'm gonna Cynthia. Yeah, because if I whiff and if I whiff either an attachment or a Malamar here, that could be pretty pretty problematic. Luckily, we did not. I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep the last energy in the discard pile just in case. Maybe I should attach it to attach it to a Malmar, because that means we have one, two. Uh, I'm, I probably should attach it to Malmar actually, just to constantly give myself retreat options, so I'm always safe. So now I just I'm always in a need of just one energy attachment to take to put myself in a decent position. But that doesn't mean I no longer have three in the discard pile. But there's one, two, three, four, five. So only five of my nine energies are in play, which means there's still plenty more in the discard pile uh, in the deck. I mean. We don't, we don't have, hmm. I'm actually not going to damage myself this time because we don't have spell tag. We don't have, what's it called? Oh, I don't remember what I was saying. I, I, oh yeah, we don't have our DCEs, I think. I think that's what I was trying to say. We only have this DC left because we only play three and nine psychic energies. So we should be fine. Yeah, he needs like, he needs an Aqua Patch here if he's gonna take a knockout this turn, because he already lost all his energy. So if he finds Aqua Patch, he's fine. But if he doesn't find Aqua Patch, uh, all he can do is Field Crush, which is not enough. Does he have the Aqua Patch? I don't know if this deck plays Aqua Patch. I don't know if I would play Aqua Patch. Honestly, I would probably just stick to two Noggin Dells. I do like what he's going for though. I do like the idea of playing this non-GX version it's a different build than my Kyurem build because it's like a completely different deck kind of, but uh, I think I would personally, maybe I would play Aqua Badges because I kind of want to go a little bit more turbo and just like really spam the board with energies. Maybe play even a Shuckle to discard energies, but yeah, he's not taking a knockout here, which is really good for us because all we have to do now is, well, we don't, we can't find it, but we could have just attempted to find a spell tag here. Well, there's nothing to grab. We'll just go ahead and take our knockout here and continuously damage this dude put him at 80 so he's just one damage counter away from being knocked out which means spell tag can proc that way 
but there's no way he can win right like can he take five knockouts before i can take two i mean i literally set up his board to be able to knock him out now he's playing down lele too hmm. i'm trying to think of like what exactly he can do here all right cool well that's another w I was tr I'm trying to find like a more competitive game like this video I've already been recording for an hour but I'm pretty sure like one of the one of the games w is going to be cut out because I had to leave in the middle of it which kind of sucks it was Gramble again but whatever I don't like playing against Gramble Gramble takes too long right because like when you play against Gramble you're, you're playing it's, it's you're just it's just long right like <laughs> Gramble might just take forever because they're constantly trying to set up their board to, to win the game which means there's a lot of dead time and I was just, uh, whatever. I had to answer the door, so I was like, I'll just scoot this game up. I also just dropped my phone onto my chair, which is bad because I could have just cracked the screen just now because it hit, like, the metal part. Um, but I did not crack the screen, so we're safe, ladies and gentlemen. I'm supposed to be getting a new phone, too, so because I'm getting, getting a new phone plan that's cheaper than the one I have right now because I'm trying to cut some corners uh, and as far as, like, how much I'm spending monthly. So I'm spending a lot of money monthly because I have to pay all my bills and stuff. I have to get a new... I'm trying to get new car insurance and a new phone plan. New phone plan I already have lined up. I just have to like start. Luckily the the uh, the fee. Oh my god, this hand sucks. Um, <laughs> luckily the fee is really cheap. I think it's only like fifteen dollars. The transfer fee, whatever it's called. Um, the startup fee, whatever. I don't I don't remember what it's called. But uh, that's it's pretty cheap. Also, I'm trying to get enough money to play to get Let's Go, man. I I hate that this is gonna be the first Pokemon game. Uh, I don't buy on a release date. Cause I usually always get the Pokemon games on release. Cause I just, I just, I just like Pokemon. I got every Pokemon game on release since uh, Yellow. I, I didn't get Pokemon Red and Blue on release. I got those, but not on release date. Cause that was before I was playing. But since Pokemon Yellow, I've gotten every Pokemon game on release thanks to my lovely, lovely cousins and uncles and things. My parents have, my parents did buy me a Game Boy. So they were the first one to give me a Game Boy. And then from there, from there on, my uh, the rest of my family have supported me by grabbing by giving me a bunch of uh okay whatever <laughs> by getting me all the games i need because i knew i loved pokemon and this includes all the side games too except for the ones uh that were on the consoles back in the day like i, I never got coliseum or stadium i think those were the only ones and snap i never got those games because uh, i didn't have those consoles when i was younger but any handheld Pokemon game I've always gotten that includes like the uh, the final the Fire Emblem one <laughs> and Pokemon tournament and things like that both Pokemon tournaments. All right, let's see if we can get a game. I'm just talking to the camera here. I have to record a lot more videos. I have to record like two more videos today to stay on schedule. So I shouldn't be taking this. This should not be as long as it is. Apparently we can we play we play so many basics in this deck, but we never lead and whenever we whenever we do except for that one game I lead pretty rough. I think in the in the Grand Bull game that I had to cut out. I led Onyx <laughs> As my only Pokemon uh, Ooh, if I can get an Ultra Ball off this Lily. Oh my god, that'd be beautiful um, On the yeah with the Grand Bull game. I led Onyx The game before that it was like between Onyx and the Krozma and Lele I think in the other game, I had to lead Lele, and I led Coco one game, and now I just, ugh, whatever. Okay, we're playing against Duskwing, so is actually going to be pretty big here. Yeah, Duskwing Magazine. I found that, like, if I can find Shrine early, uh, Necrozma GX, and, like, Coco spreading, and even potentially Arceus spreading is going to be so big in this matchup, and even play down Lele. So we already have all the tools we need to win this game. So at this point, it's just a matter of, like, finding all the pieces. We need to find Shrine, and we have to find a Coco spreader. And then from there, we just spread enough and we win the game with Black Ray. So that's the game plan here. Especially if we can, uh, if we can like target like these Necrozmas on the bench. We have Malamar in our hand. I'm still gonna Lily here because our hand is like pretty decent, even though we're only drawing two. Maybe I should, okay. Yeah, this worked out. All right, so. Chance of him knocking me out next turn exist, like by a good amount. So I kind of want to put Coco in the active. We have a draw supporter. So we should be okay. I need to put down two ink at least. So let me drop. I'm probably gonna use a stretcher actually, because something is going to be knocked out. I can feel it. Um Yeah, let me drop a Cynthia. To get a an ink. I'm gonna put him to sleep actually. And hope for the best here. I'm gonna ultra ball. Let's get Coco, I think. 
I can I feel like I'm definitely gonna be playing stretcher next turn uh, because he's most likely gonna wake up so I'm actually gonna just discard those to get myself Coco because I'm gonna need this Coco no shrine unfortunately but fortunately I can use hypnosis here and hopefully he doesn't get an attack next turn right so hopefully he doesn't wake up come on dang it. okay this is why I grabbed the stretcher because I knew I was gonna probably have to play it. He's definitely gonna take a knockout here on my Inke, uh, which is, uh, it's not the end of the world. If I can find a DCE, that's gonna be pretty good because then I can just attack with, I can start attacking with Coco. Uh, if not, it's not the end of the world either. This is kind of an annoyance because he can Oko all my Pokemon, including like my Malmars if he attacks him with that uh, turn back time attack. But once again, we are playing a spread deck. Necrozma is going to be our way to win this game. So we have to make sure that we can continue to spread fairly easily. We just have to draw well. We get to draw six, assuming whatever we top deck is pretty useless to Cynthia. So we unfortunately are not going to be able to draw six. Um, I will draw five, though, because this keeps my Cynthia in my hand, which is pretty good. I could have went out into my Coco, which would have been fine. But like I said, I don't really mind too much because that means I get to play um i can put my stretch in hand anyways which it was unnecessary to be fair um hmm. this hand is not great we can manually attach actually no it's pretty good if we have another coco in deck right yeah we do dope yeah this works out pretty nicely because we can actually attack this turn all right let's do this still no shrine i mean i'm only playing two so i'm not exactly like the most surprised that we haven't found shrine yet We have Cynthia for next turn. So overall, this is not bad at all. We can continuously do this and potentially win just based off of Necrozma again. So we just need to continuously, we have to, oh man, if I can just find Shrine, man. I know the tournament that I went to recently, I won this game like in three turns, I think, because of the strategy I told you guys, or just I've been telling you guys. I found Shrine turn one, I was attacking with Coco. Uh, since turn one, because I found DCE turn one as well, and I led with Coco, so it was like best case scenario clearly. But I led Coco, found DCE, found Shrine, and just took and just Coco spread twice. And since Shrine stuck those couple turns, who was at like I think I was like 40 damage plus the 20, 40, so 80 damage. So everything had 80 damage, and then I slapped down Necrozma, uh, Malmar, Malmar, energy attachment, switched into switched into the Necrozma GX and won the game because Shrine was still down. So it was like, it was a ridiculous game for me. <laughs> so this is kind of bad. Because if I'm going to attack with Coco this turn, I'm going to have to probably go into Ninke. So we're going to have to do this. Because I have to find a manual attachment on Malmar now, right? Oh, never mind. I'm just find DC. Oh, wait a minute. That's our manual attachment, though. Uh, yikes. It's okay, though. Oh, man. I wish I went to Coco now. Um... Uh, but anyways, anyways, the chance of drawing it were pretty low, as opposed to everything else we're going to be drawing. Uh, I think I slapped down this game, okay? Sure. Because he's going to be taking consistent knockouts anyways. Uh, we'll go ahead and just sit the air here, and hopefully we can find Walmart. Spell tag, come on! Okay, we got it. Oh, that was scary. <laughs> that was very scary. Uh, this hand is pretty okay. It's not great. Actually, hmm. Uh, we don't get it. We, we can still attack with Coco this turn, but I'm just trying to think about future turns. Uh, still no shrine once again. Guzma's pretty good, but we have to draw into things next turn, so we're probably not gonna be able to use Guzma. I want to keep these. Oh, actually, we can keep these in hand, we'll be, we'll be okay. Um, let me grab mom right here. I wish I could put Shrine Punch on Coco. All right, he has to be able to get all the energies down again next turn as well. All we need to do now is let Shrine tick for a little bit, and I think we can win. Uh, maybe even like give him a spell tag proc with something at some point. But we'll go ahead and just Coco spread again. I needed another Malmar because then I would have been able to attach that energy to an Inke and have that be able to retreat. Because now we're going to have to manually attach. Now, manually attaching isn't bad because 
we can manually attach, find ourselves a draw supporter, or find ourselves a maybe like a Giratina or something. Uh, find ourselves our last Malamar, attach all the energies to the Giratina, and then start going from there. I could also find Stretcher, but we already used one of them. We still have another one in the deck, so it's not like impossible. But once again, Shrine of Punishment, where are you? There's a Guzma, so we're just gonna go for a Malamar right here. It's pretty smart, but like at the same time, I'd rather have Coco's down. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I have. Oh, this is this is beautiful for me actually. And we even got another Malamar down. Oh my god, this is just stunningly gorgeous. Um, even oh, this is so good for me. We're gonna have to lose this Guzma in hand, but once again, this is fine. Yeah, this is this is okay. This is a okay with me. In fact, I'm not even gonna grab. Uh, I'm not. I'm gonna grab Giratina. So he's gonna, he's gonna have to take a knockout at some point in order for him to win the game. So we'll, we'll have the bench space available for uh, the Necrozma. And I know that I could have saved that, that saved that to find Necrozma later, but there's Necrozma now. And let's see if we can find ourselves another Malamar. We did not, but Tain Lies is pretty good. Gives us a retreat option in case he does what he just did again. And we can just start setting up this boy on the bench. And once again, like we're, we're ready. We're ready to just win. Still no shrine, <laughs> but we're pretty ready to just win. We just have to let the crowd, we have to let this Giratina be knocked out at some point. But other than that, we're just, we're okay. Flying clip again. Cause uh, this thing is gonna be in range if we can find one shrine, right? And these dudes are gonna be in range with Giratina, with, uh, with spell tag drops and one shrine. So literally all we need is a shrine and we win the game. We have not, I don't think we can play a full game today, apparently. But yeah, we literally just need to try and let Giratina be knocked out and we won the game that turn. Like as soon as Giratina got knocked out. So we had two turns to win, um, but overall, like I want to play a full game, but this video is very long. <laughs> is it, uh, we haven't played against Zorak yet either. No, you know what? I, I should probably end the video because I, I, I know this is video is very long for you guys. I gotta get some recording done. So let me know if you guys want to see me play either the other, the Malamar text. I'm not even gonna show you that. Let's say, look, look at those crazy typings. <laughs> Malamar text, or if you want me to play this deck again, or maybe even stream with this deck and upload the stream. Let me know what you guys think. But I'm very happy with the list. The only thing I wanna do, I mean, honestly, I, I would love to just add more draw supporters in this deck, because this deck is all about finding, the, finding your draw supporters and things. I might even play another Ultra Ball. Maybe a second Lele. I mean, there's so many options in this deck. Ultra Ball, I'm not super against because then once again, a fourth Ultra Ball is, doesn't seem bad at all. I might just do that over the Acro Bike. I'm not too sure. This Acro Bike has been really clutch as well. So it kind of feels unfair to do that. But I mean, like I said, that Acro Bike is literally an open space for me to just try out different ideas. So maybe four Ultra Balls is the way to go maybe another maybe another tv reporter maybe like a marsh shadow over and just play both marsh shadow and judge so i have two ways to disrupt so unknown hand can never beat me in case of prizing and things like that uh maybe a fourth dce although that seems very unnecessary anyways let me know what you guys think of the deck down below it's very consistent very straightforward i love the deck a lot it's literally one of my favorites i want to keep playing it and keep making text and test it. keep testing it and doing ideas and stuff like that so uh, I might try to like contact other youtubers and do like a best of three Playing different decks as well. Maybe playing this as well. Hmm, that might be fun Anyways, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think don't forget to drop a like subscribe share all that good jazz and I'll see you guys next time Peace